Hi, I'm Pat Wilson, Commissioner of the Georgia Department of Economic Development, and I'm proud to welcome you to the 2020 Governor's Awards for the Arts and Humanities. Each year, the Office of the Governor, in partnership with the Georgia Council for the Arts and Georgia Humanities, recognize the best of our state's arts and humanities community. We pay tribute to the most distinguished citizens and organizations who have demonstrated a lifetime commitment to work in these fields. The Georgia Council for the Arts and Georgia Humanities play an important role in supporting this community. The Georgia Council for the Arts cultivates the growth of vibrant, thriving Georgia communities through the arts. And while the Georgia Humanities promotes and preserves the stories and cultural legacies of the state's people to enrich their lives and strengthen their communities. Their programs, hard work, and dedication play a leading role in the strengthening and growth of Georgia's arts and humanities sector. And because of these organizations, we have the opportunity each year to gather to present the Governor's Awards for the Arts and Humanities, where we honor the top individuals and organizations in this sector. In the past, we've gathered at the State Capitol to see performances and hear from our award recipients. Although this year's ceremony is virtual, I'm pleased to say that you'll have the opportunity to hear the recipients speak and watch them perform and see their artwork in this video. Before we announce this year's winners, I'd like to thank Georgia Poet Laureate Chelsea Rathburn for writing the poem featured on the awards. Chelsea is an award-winning poet who was appointed by Governor Kemp in 2019 as Georgia's 11th Poet Laureate. I'd also like to thank Tennille Schuster, an illustrator, designer, and faculty member at Mercer University who collaborated with Chelsea Rathburn to produce the awards. I'd now like to introduce you to Governor Kemp, who will recognize the individuals and organizations in Georgia's arts and humanities communities who do good and sometimes hard work every day to create our cultural identity of place. Georgia's arts and humanities communities have a powerful impact on economic development in our state. And the Georgia Council for the Arts and Georgia Humanities programs are important partners in those efforts. Georgia's creative industries have had a $62.5 billion impact on our economy, generating roughly $37 billion in revenue and accounting for about 200,000 jobs in the state. They contribute to education, innovation, and quality of life. They strengthened community growth while preserving Georgia's cultural identity. But even more than that, they create connections, providing a greater understanding of our place in the world around us. Each year, we recognize excellence and achievement in visual arts, history, literature, music, and higher education. The awardees for the Governor's Arts and Humanities Awards represent the top individuals and organizations in these important sectors. Not only do they have incredible talent, but their tireless work paves the way for future generations. On behalf of all Georgians, it is an honor to congratulate the recipients of the 2020 Governor's Awards for the Arts and Humanities. These individuals and organizations represent the strength creativity and innovation that will carry our state forward. And it's my honor to thank the awardees for their continuous contributions to the growth of our state. God bless you. Hello, my name is Nicole Potsoff and I'm the Executive Director for the Blue Ridge Mountains Arts Association. We are a nonprofit arts council that currently resides within Fannin County, Georgia. On behalf of our staff, our board of directors, our volunteers, our artists, and our community, we say thank you. Thank you for honoring us with the Georgia Governor's Award for Arts and Humanities. In these unprecedented times, we are beyond grateful, and especially in our 40th anniversary year. For the last 40 years, the Blue Ridge Mountains Arts Association has strived to follow our mission of providing opportunities in the realm of the arts, not only for the individual, but for our community. Why am I passionate about our organization here in Georgia? What makes us unique? With the Blue Ridge Mountains Arts Association, we follow four core values. Enhance and preserve the quality of the arts, honor our rich Appalachian heritage and culture, promote multicultural and multidisciplinary arts, and also serve as a catalyst for economic development, highlighting a creative economy. So for us, we strive to work with and not simply for our community. 
We offer a variety of options and opportunities in those arts, whether it be performance, literary, or visual. We have writers conference, arts festivals, classes, gallery spaces for artists to hang their artwork, and opportunities for us to get into the classroom, provide the arts within the classroom and educational setting. We also provide multiple opportunities for community outreach with regards to the arts. So in these unprecedented times, I have heard that science will get us out of this, but it is the arts that will get us through it. It is incredible what arts can create and develop in such difficult times. So for me, it's looking at our rural community and saying what well, we have grown and developed within the arts for the last 40 years. And we are so grateful that you've been able to recognize that. So on behalf of the Blue Ridge Mountains Arts Association, once again, we thank you for this incredible award. Hello, my name is Fred C. Fussell. I live in Columbus, Georgia. I'm a former museum curator and a specialist in the study and interpretation of traditional Southern culture. It was recently my pleasure to nominate Brian Brown of Fitzgerald for a 2020 Georgia Governor's Award in the Arts and Humanities. Brian Brown is a historian and a documentary photographer. Brian has created and currently maintains several websites that focus on endangered buildings all around our state. And together, those sites comprise one of the largest independent archives to have ever been produced in the state of Georgia. Since the early 2000s, Brian has worked tirelessly to document endangered vernacular architecture, which is one of Georgia's often overlooked cultural resources. And he has tirelessly made it his mission to share the importance of rare and threatened buildings with his fellow Georgians all around the state. Of particular interest to him are historic farms, general stores, African-American resources, vernacular art environments, and the many other important cultural landmarks that abound in Georgia. His body of work has given a permanent visual presence to many rural communities that otherwise might have remained underrepresented in the digital landscape. Brian's fascination with the arts and humanities dates to back in his childhood, thanks to an assignment for his high school newspaper when he was only 16 years old, he was one of the last people to interview the famous Georgia author, Erskine Caldwell. And while Brian Brown is actually a poet at heart, by the time he was awarded the Dorothy Singer Rosenberg Poetry Prize in 2008, his focus had already shifted away from writing to a full-time career in photography. During that year, he began the formal production of an ongoing archive documenting the endangered architecture and vernacular culture of Georgia. A private encounter with artist William Christenberry in 2010 encouraged Brown to continue his work and to expand it to include endangered buildings in all corners of Georgia. Georgians far and near O'Brien Brown a debt of gratitude for his dedicated effort to maintain and increase awareness of our state's amazing architectural history. Thank you so much, Brian Brown, for your truly exceptional work. Hello, my name is Brian Brown, and I'm a photographer from Fitzgerald who's spent the last 15 years documenting the state's vernacular architecture. While many good books exist documenting our formal architecture, my goal was to focus on places often overlooked by historians and photographers. I started the project due to the loss of structures on my family's own farm in Ben Hill County, but soon realized there was a great need to document these places throughout the state. Now, vernacular architecture is simply what people build who have no architectural skills. They use 
forms that they're already familiar with. They use what tools and what materials they have available to them. So therefore, it's important to see it as the architecture of the people who made Georgia. The farmers, the loggers, the small town shopkeepers and entrepreneurs with the change in population and the exodus out of the farmland and into the larger cities in Georgia, much of this is being left behind and forgotten. I'm honored to be able to preserve their history through photographs of the places that they called home. I'm grateful to Fred Fussell for nominating me for this honor and to the governor's office for their kind recognition of my work. But I'd also be like to thank all of the people who have supported my work over the years through my website, through the identification of very obscure places, they have helped make my work what it is. I am Joanne Wood, Social Studies Program Specialist at the Georgia Department of Education. And I am proud to recognize Dr. Eddie Bennett as a true humanities hero. I'd like to share words from his colleagues while we catch glimpses of Eddie in recent years. From Mary Stakes, from his first days in the social studies classroom to his state leadership roles today, Dr. Bennett, Mr. Social Studies, has kept the humanities front and center in his career. Sharon Coleman adds, in his GCSS executive director role, he has cooperated with humanities leaders to host speakers such as Representative John Lewis, Holocaust survivors, and others. Heather McKenzie Cootie remarks, I remain inspired by his pledge to keep our members informed and connected to humanities-based opportunities in our state. Dr. Randall Trammell adds, Eddie encouraged me to launch the Georgia Center for Civic Engagement to answer a need in Georgia. Dr. Glenn Blankenship adds, Dr. Bennett is a model for collaboration and an avid lifelong learner who works to share what he has learned with other educators. Dr. Pamela Roach adds, what matters most is his mentoring and friendship. Eddie wants the best for people and seeks to make that happen for them, not to them, but for them. Dr. Be Becky Rickley says, Dr. Bennett's tireless leadership and unflagging optimism shine like a lighthouse lighting the path for others to follow. Mike Raymer adds, during my more than 12 years at the Georgia Council on Economic Education, I have yet to meet an individual who selflessly serves others as much as Dr. Eddie Bennett. Patricia Gallery adds, I have known and worked with Eddie for over 25 years. I cannot think of anyone more deserving of this award. We have been lucky in the state of Georgia to have such a strong advocate. On a personal note, it is my honor to nominate Dr. Eddie Bennett for this award. My name is Eddie Bennett, and I'm currently the executive director of the Georgia Council for the Social Studies. I've been a social studies educator for 43 years. I began my career teaching social studies and math in a sixth grade classroom in Banks County. I grew up in Gillsville, Banks County, Georgia, and have always been active in my church and community. My parents, grandparents, and extended family have always supported me in all my endeavors. When I was in the third grade, my daddy said to me, you're going to college, and he saw to it that I did. I am fortunate to have graduated from Truman Connell College, Mars Hill College, now University, the University of Georgia, and Nova Southeastern University. I have never regretted becoming a social studies educator. Growing up in a small rural community, I had great teachers who were my role models, and I wanted to be like them. I've always loved to read, especially history and historical fiction. And because I read a lot then and now, I consider the humanities a vital part of my education both inside and outside of the classroom. Last, I want to thank my friend and colleague, Joanne Wood and others for their support in nominating me for this prestigious award. Hello, this is Dr. Zarek Clinton. I'm the past president of the Georgia Art Ed Association. It gives me great honor today to be here to present 
my awardee, uh, Mr. Kevin Cole, that I nominated for the Governor's Award. Um, I want to make sure that I get to all of his things, so I'm going to get right into it. Kevin um, has really been an inspiration to me as a mentor, as a artist, as an educator. And he has also been a mentor to a lot of students over the years. He has artwork in over um, 3,600 public and private collections, including corporate ones as well. He is um, presently working on several commissions. He has artwork in the High Museum of Art, Georgia Museum of Art. He's received over 65 teaching awards over the years. He's uh, been the teacher of the year at um, two middle schools. He's been the secondary art educator year for our association, the Georgia Art Ed Association. He's also been the secondary division um, educator for our region for the National Art Ed Association. Uh, also, Kevin has 32 years of teaching experience at the middle school and high school level. He has also been an inspiration to several of his art students over the years in terms of inspiring them to become artists themselves. His um, academic prowess is, is unmatched. His ability to continue to push after 32 years of experience is unbelievable. And he is one of the greatest mentors, not just to me, but to a lot of his students that I've met in the recent years. I want to just congratulate and present to you the Governor's Award awardee, Mr. Kevin Cole. Hi, my name is Kevin Cole, and I'm an artist and educator. And I want to thank uh, the, the Governor's Award for this wonderful opportunity. I'm from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Uh, I uh, moved to Atlanta in 1985. Uh, I've been I've been here uh, teaching at, at teaching middle school, high school, and college. I uh, worked as an adjunct professor at Georgia State University. I also taught at SCAD. Um, I was an AP art consultant for SCAD Atlanta. Um, I have been involved in the community um, as an artist and educator for for a while. Um, I also uh, I like the idea of being a part. Of, of the of the community and involved in t teaching kids. Uh, I would say the pivotal point of my career was in 1994 when I was selected to create a 15 story mural for the 1996 Olympics. And uh, in creating this mural, I was supposed to depict the unsung heroes of Georgia. And uh, I really enjoyed doing that mural. But then I also do my personal work, which involves uh, the concept dealing with the idea of, um, of the relationship between sight, sound, and color, but also dealing with, it, I, dealing with the concept of neckties. When I graduated from high school, I didn't want to go to register to vote. My grandfather took me to a tree where African Americans were lynched by their neckties on their way to vote. So the necktie image appeared a lot in my work, and later I incorporated a lot of the scarf images to represent the struggle of women. A lot of these pieces are done on wood. When you think about somebody being lynched, uh, you think about the idea of wood, so I'm bending wood. Also, I work on, on metal and tar paper. That was my uh, protest against September 11th, which I was supposed to be in, in New York that day. Hello, my name is Susan Durkees. I have known Yvonne Grobner for over 20 years and have been a very big fan of her basket weaving for a long time. Yvonne worked for the Georgia Department of Natural Resources for a number of years, giving tours of the island and teaching people about the island's rich history. Since the 1920s, the gentrification of Georgia coastline has created a threat to the Gullah Geechee culture. While the coast has been populated with more and more high-end housing and exclusive resorts, it has essentially required many Gullah Geechee to sell their coastal homes and move further inland where real estate taxes were lower. Today, there are less than 60, maybe 47 residents on Sapelo Island. Sapelo remains one of the few 100% Gullah Geechee communities on the Georgia and even South Carolina coasts. So it is important to carry on the traditions that have been taught through the generations. Without Yvonne's continued desire to share her art with the world, we would be losing a great part of the Gullah Geechee culture. Basket weaving was not only an art, 
but the baskets also serve great purpose when transporting goods. These baskets are so tightly woven, they proved to be very strong containers and would last for years. Yvonne takes great pride in her basket making and she shares her tradition with anyone who wishes to learn. She often gives workshops and demonstrations at festivals and schools. Technology has replaced many handmade goods, but there is nothing like a handmade basket from Yvonne. Thank you so much to Governor Kemp and to the Georgia Humanities Council, the Georgia Department of Economic Development, and all who helped make giving a much deserved honor to Yvonne Grovner. There is no one I know who deserves it more. Congratulations, Yvonne, and thank you again. My name is Yvonne Grovner, and I live here on Sapelo Island. I'm married to R. Jean Grovner. I married and moved here 40 years ago. And we have two kids and two grandkids. And I um, work for the Department of National Resources. I retired on October the 1st from being the tour guide on Sapelo for the last 30 years. Okay, this is a sweet grass basket. And basket weaving is a tradition that came from Africa. And I learned to make basket from Alan Green, who was a famous basket weaver on Sapelo Island. And he taught us how to do this basket about 20, 22, 24 years ago. And all this is made from grass that was grown right here on the island called sweet grass. And this is the palmetto. That is the binding that holds the basket together. And basket, it, it, like I tell you, it is a, a dying art. So we're trying to keep this tradition going on. And I have received grants from the Reynolds Foundation, George Council of the Art, to try to teach the kids here and teach other people to keep this alive. I'd like to thank a few people, Susan Durkee, Khalifa Jordan from the Mackinac County Shelters, Fred Hay from Georgia Department of National Resources, and Mandy Harrison from the Mackinac County Chamber of Commerce for nominating me for the Governor Award of Arts and Humanity. Hi. My name is Chris Jesperson, and I'm Dean of the College of Arts and Letters at the University of North Georgia. Today, it is my pleasure to talk about Jim Hammond. Jim recently retired from UNG after more than 30 years serving as the Artistic and Managing Director of the Gainesville Theater Alliance, as well as being the head of the theater department at North Georgia. GTA is built upon the special relationship developed between Brunel College and Gainesville State College at the time of its founding, and then, after 2013 and the consolidation between Gainesville State and North Georgia College and State University between Brunel and UNG. Jim's tenure at UNG and GTA has been marked by artistic excellence, inclusivity, community outreach, and a dedication to helping GTA students become the very best performers and set designers they can. GTA has grown, and its numerous annual productions on the Brunel and UNG campuses allow thousands of local and regional patrons the opportunity to experience live theater of the highest caliber. In addition, GTA has a special program for elementary school-age students as a way of introducing them to the excitement and joy of theater. For three decades, Jim has led GTA and its students, faculty, and staff to great accomplishments. GTA is a Gainesville community gem, and Jim has been the one to ensure that it continued to shine all these years. Congratulations, Jim. Hello, my name is Jim Hammond. For the last 30 years, I served as the Artistic and Managing Director of the Gainesville Theater Alliance, and I want to thank those who nominated and selected me for this honor. I was a 20-year-old college student when my focus shifted from journalism to a life in the theater. That life doesn't happen without the support of so many people. And at the top of that list is my mentor and the architect of the Gainesville Theater Alliance, Ed Cabell. I want to thank the University of North Georgia and Brunel University for their endless commitment to GTA and the Northeast Georgia community, whose support is the glue holding the Alliance together. There are very few college theater programs that generate a quarter of a million dollars in ticket revenue. I want to thank the faculty and staff 
who have been wonderful colleagues and collaborators, and the hundreds of professional guest artists who have joined us as actors, directors, designers, many from the Atlanta theater community, whose work has been a constant inspiration to me throughout my career. Finally, and most importantly, I want to thank the young men and women who have been my students. It has been such a joy studying theater with you and watching your continued success. I chose a life in the theater because of its power to bring us together, to open our eyes to the world around us, and to inspire us to love and live life with more courage, more generosity, and a greater understanding of the road we must walk together. This has been a very difficult time for all the performing arts, but I am confident that the painful absence of live performance has created such a hunger that we will soon see a new arts renaissance. And I look forward to participating and supporting that bright future in any way I can. As I retire after 38 years of teaching, it is with a full heart that I thank you for this honor. I'm Kevin Grogan. I direct the Morris Museum of Art in Augusta. It's my pleasant duty to introduce William S. Morris III as a recipient of the Governor's Award in the Arts and Humanities. Billy Morris is a lifelong Augustan, the longtime publisher of the Augusta Chronicle. He is the chairman and CEO of Morris Communications. He was educated in Augusta's public schools before attending the Darlington School in Rome, Georgia. He is a proud graduate of the Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communications at the University of Georgia, where he established an endowed chair in the journalism school. He has served as the chairman of the Newspaper Association of America and as a former director of the Associated Press, the Advertising Council, the Southern Company, the National Science Center Foundation, and Georgia Power Company. He is a former member and chairman of the University System of Georgia Board of Regents and a former trustee of the Columbia Theological Seminary. He is a founder and former chairman of the Greater Augusta Sports Council. Since its founding, he has served as the chairman of the museum's board of trustees, helping to guide it through an era of unprecedented growth an era that was not without its challenges, that has seen this museum become a leader in its field. We are all the richer for it. This year, he joins nine other distinguished Georgians for their special recognition as a recipient of the 2020 Governor's Award in the Arts and Humanities, William S. Morris III. Good evening, I'm Billy Morris. While I am honored to receive this award, I commend Governor Kemp and the Georgia Council for the Arts for their work in supporting arts in our state. Augusta has been my home for seven generations, my family's home. While I was young, Columbia and Atlanta had art museums. There was something my hometown lacked. It's an art museum. So I thought, even as a youngster, that this was a problem and it, someday perhaps I could fix it. Eventually that day came when we realized we had the means to make a contribution to our community, something that, that would benefit all. That's why years ago, my wife Sissy and I founded the Morris Museum of Art. Its name honors my parents. My father gave me my drive and my business sense and my mother an appreciation of the importance of the arts. Art in our communities can promote tourism, downtown development, business development, and community identity, and provide a better quality of life for all. Right here in Augusta, we have a prime example of the importance of the arts to education. The Jesse Norman School of the Arts founded 17 years ago here in Augusta to honor Jesse Norman, the internationally acclaimed opera singer who was a native of Augusta. The school was founded in response to the belief that given the opportunity to explore the arts, students would perform better in other studies and become more involved citizens. That has been true. Students 
from the Jesse Norman School of the Arts consistently outperform their peers academically, and all of them graduate from high school in a county which has a graduation rate of less than 80%. This is a clear-cut example of the importance of the arts in education right here in Augusta. This museum is my wife and my legacy. Not just a gift to Augusta, but a gift to countless generations of Augustans and Americans yet to come. Knowing that Augusta is a better place, a better community because of the museum should be a reward enough. Receiving the Governor's Award in the arts for doing something that I love is a great honor. My name is Janice Ray, and I want to introduce you to my friend and inspiration, Susan Murphy. Susan is an artist whose medium is the body, um, that most ancient of forms, who through um, movement, shape, and gesture create beauty and meaning. Susan is an American pioneer in aerial modern dance, which uses apparatus uh, attached overhead allowing a dancer to move through three dimensions as well as two. Um, Susan has lived and danced in San Francisco and New York City, but in 1999, most importantly, she returned to her native Georgia and brought the art of aerial modern dance with her. Susan is a vastly creative person filled with passion. She's a performer and a teacher eager to bring joy into the lives of others, always envisioning a more imaginative and livable world. Hello, my name is Susan Murphy. What do I love about this work? Pioneering in the aerial arts has necessitated that I grow as an artist and share my growth with the hundreds of students I have taught. From a skill-based form focusing on technique, I have integrated my training as a therapist and poet, widening the expressive content of performance, giving it a greater universality, cultivating audiences in Athens and now coastal Georgia is an ongoing goal. And eventually I will hold adult retreats and teach kids in my community again. Now I'm going to do a small piece of a solo I created with spoken word and trapeze. I am in my last trimester. Waiting to be born into what? Another life? I should take leave of this playful, poignant life I've created with Don and those I love. Will any Susanness remain? Any smidgen? of pure Susan distillation, or will I dissolve into nothing? Perhaps join with everything. Yes. It has begun. My leaning into the mystery, the dark mystery from which I came and to which I shall return. Turning, 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 untangling these mortal crowns. I feel the pull 
of the mystery. I feel the pull of the of the mystery. It was our pleasure to nominate the Museum of Arts and Sciences for the Governor's Award of Excellence. The museum truly is a treasure, not only for our region, but also for our state. The museum demonstrates its commitment to the arts and arts education through its high quality exhibitions and stewardship of shared resources, including not only this campus and its facilities, but also scholars, collections, and regional influence. The museum is addressing some of the region's most pressing challenges in the areas of school readiness, K-12 academic performance, and workforce development. Because students across Georgia are underperforming in science, the museum has expanded its campus, collections and faculty as needed to deliver accessible enrichment learning experiences using a STEAM framework for learning that integrates the arts with the STEM disciplines. No other institution in Georgia is more committed or better equipped to meet this need. We are so proud to be recognized for artistic excellence in Georgia and that the nomination came from Wesleyan makes it even more meaningful. 
Few people remember, but the museum began in a single rented room in the basement floor of the former Wesleyan College campus. And from those modest beginnings to our now state-of-the-art facility on a 20-acre campus, the Museum of Arts and Sciences represents more than a half century of community investment in education. As soon as I started working at Wesleyan, I, I recognized this museum and I came and visited and thought this is amazing. This is going to be such a great resource for me. I bring students here and more than once the students have either interacted with a staff member or the director or even the artists themselves have been here to talk about their work so we always get a really individualized experience when we're here. I think it's one of the best teaching and educational resources in our community. This museum is so important to me as an artist because it not only has personally supported me, but it also is a place of inspiration for me. I think the Emerging Artist exhibition that happens every spring is one of the best contemporary art shows in the Southeast. This museum plays such an important part in our cultural education, in our science and math education, in our arts education, but it also provides a space for our community to experience art and culture in a way that nowhere else does in a time when it can be really hard for museums and it just really like pushes forward and is such a wonderful place. The museum is recognized throughout the Southeast for its innovative art-infused science programming. Using art to teach science in an effective and compelling manner makes both disciplines more accessible to wider audiences. The museum is particularly interested in work that explores the intersection of art and science and the visual articulation of scientific observations and mathematical concepts. We look for professionals who are influencing the direction of contemporary artwork through the combination of art and science. Dozens of nationally recognized STEAM artists have exhibited at the museum in recent years. These exhibitions provide valuable professional development and networking opportunities for artists scholars, and students in Georgia. For more than 60 years, our museum has been a vital link to showing the central Georgia region what dynamic and immersive learning is all about. From modern masterpieces to immersive and wondrous trips through the stars, we're proud to be a trusted resource for lifelong learning, and it's our mission to evoke wonder, stimulate curiosity, and open the minds of all ages to new worlds of discovery. My name's Jennifer Barlament. I'm the executive director of the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra, and it is my great pleasure to work with Robert Spano. In the 20 years that he's been the music director of the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra, Robert has made an indelible impact on the institution. As music director, he chooses the repertoire, he chooses the soloists, he helps select musicians in the orchestra as well. And in all of those aspects, he has led and guided and shaped the sound of the orchestra and also made a great impact on the musical life of the community in Atlanta. And it's now my pleasure to introduce Robert Spano, music director of the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra and recipient of the Governor's Award in Arts and Humanities. I'm Robert Spano, music director of the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. I've been the music director here for 20 years, and even though I'm not a native to Atlanta, it's very much become my home. And much of the time, we've been able to travel around the state with the orchestra, and it's been a great joy to be part of the artistic life of the state of Georgia. I'm very lucky in that I was born into a very musical family. My parents were musicians, my grandparents, my uncles. So it was just like a fish to water that I became a musician. And then I had the great fortune to go to institutions of higher learning that were of immense help to me in my development as a musician and as a human being. And I think that the community of musicians in the world is a very special one because we are all in music endeavoring to create connection. And so in a sense, being a musician is engaging with community because that's music's mission. And I know that in my time here, so much of the joy has been connecting with our audiences, with the people who care about us, with the musicians themselves, with the chorus, with our 
ticket buyers, with our board. It's a beautiful tapestry of humanity that binds us together. I feel very grateful to receive this honor. Thank you to our governor. It's been a great honor to be here with the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra for 20 years. Congratulations to the winners of the 2020 Governor's Awards for the Arts and Humanities. Thank you for your time and dedication to Georgia's Arts and Humanities. And on behalf of the Georgia Council for the Arts and Georgia Humanities, we would like to thank Governor Kemp for his recognition of this year's recipients and the importance of their work to preserve Georgia's culture and fuel economic growth. We'd also like to thank the boards of the Georgia Humanities, and their chairman, Gary Hauk, the Georgia Council for the Arts, and their chairman, Barry Shrink, and the Selection Committee volunteers. 2020 has been an unprecedented year, but Georgia's arts and humanities communities continue to bring creativity, positive perspective, and innovation to our state. Thank you again for the talented and hardworking awardees, and to all who made it possible to celebrate the 2020 Governor's Awards for the Arts and Humanities.